Hello everyone and welcome back to Learn with Nasir and Fatma. So in this video, I'm going to share with you everything that you need to learn about the Marie Curie PhD Fellowship. What it is, um, what's the eligibility criteria, what's the funding amount, what's the project duration, and in what ways is this PhD Fellowship different from a regular PhD Fellowship which the universities offer. And the key message that I really want you guys to take from this video is that if you are really planning to do a PhD, then you should not miss the opportunity to apply for this scholarship, for this fellowship. And because this is the this is one of the best, if not the best PhD fellowship in the whole world. And towards the end of this video, I am going to share with you the online portal where you can find the Marie Curie PhD fellowships which are available right now. So without further ado, let's begin. All right, so what is Marie Curie PhD fellowship? Marie Curie PhD fellowship is a research support group uh, which is created by the European Union and the name actually comes from a famous Polish and French scientist with the same name, Mary Skodowska Curie, uh, who remains to be the only person and woman in the whole world in the human history who has won not just one but two Nobel Prizes and those two not only in one but two separate fields. The first one in physics in 1903 and the second one in chemistry in 1911. This research group offers PhD positions and postdoc positions in more than 40 different research fields uh, including engineering, physics, chemistry, economics, arts, architecture, medical sciences, you name it. Any field that you can think of, this PhD fellowship provides a position in that. And these positions are offered all across Europe and in some instances even outside of Europe. So there are several different categories which are defined inside of this group, uh, including ITN, which is Innovative Training Network, IF, which is the Individual Fellowships, and RISE, which is the Research and Innovation Staff Exchange. But the most common positions which you are going to find are the ITN, the Innovate, Innovate, Innovative Training Network. And that's the category where I also applied whenever I applied for a Marie Curie position. So all the information which I'm going to share with you in this video is most accurately going to be applicable to the ITN related positions. And for the IF and RISE related positions, you can just go to Marie Curie's online website and you can, and you can get more information from there. So before moving forward, there is a general eligibility criteria which you have to satisfy if you are applying for a Marie Curie PhD fellowship and it applies to all kinds of positions in whichever field you are applying regardless of the fact that there might be any additional eligibility criteria which you can search based on the position that you are applying to but there is going to be a general eligibility criteria which you must satisfy and it includes two points. The first point is that you should you should have done a master's degree in a related field and that master's degree shouldn't be older than four years. So for example, if you have done your master's in 2020, then you are eligible to apply for a PhD for a Marie Curie PhD fellowship until 2024. And the second point is that even if you are a resident of the country in which you are applying for this position, you shouldn't have lived in that country for more than 12 months during the last three years. So for example, when I was applying for this Marie Curie PhD fellowship, which I have got right now, I, I was applying for it in February of 2020, but I had graduated from Bilkent University, Turkey in 2018, in April of 2018. So the biggest question that they were asking me at that time was that you are satisfying this two year gap eligibility criteria at a very narrow range because I had stayed for like 10 months during the last three years in the same country where I was applying for this Marie Curie PhD fellowship. So, but then Corona happened and everything got delayed. So there was no issues after, after that. Okay, so next let's discuss what are the differences between a Marie Curie PhD fellowship and a regular PhD fellowship, which is offered by the universities all around the world and what are what are the specialties what are the major differences that make this fellowship so special okay so the first major difference is that the Marie Curie PhD fellowships are open throughout the year like you don't have to wait for fall or the spring semesters to apply for a PhD to a university you can just go to the portal and look for the open positions throughout the year and you can just apply. So even if I go to the to the portal right now, I'm going to see some open positions and I can just apply. The second difference is that Marie Curie PhD fellowships, especially the ones that lie in the ITN, the Innovative Training Network, um, are, are built up of 
lots of industrial partners and research institutions and they, there is like a consortium of these institutions which is spread out all across Europe. So for example in the same project there might be some positions in UK, some in Sweden, some in France, Italy, Turkey etc. So one of the biggest advantages of this consortium structure is that there are going to be training events organized at regular intervals by the by all the host institutions which are inside of your project and you physically get to travel to those uh, to those training events and and it just increases your experience and your exposure and apart from that there are going to be actually two segments as well in which you are in which you are going to spend three to four months in another host institution or industrial partner within your project and you are going to work with other researchers and your colleagues within the project and of course it's a great way of increasing your professional circle and it's a great way of getting some networking opportunities and increasing your experience. Okay, so the next big difference between Marie Curie PhD fellowships and the other regular PhD fellowships is that in Marie Curie PhD fellowships you are primarily going to be hired as a researcher in a research institution and not as a student inside of a university. Although you are still going to be enrolled in the university's PhD program because you are in the end going to get your PhD degree from that university. But the thing to remember is that you are going to be working as a researcher, as an employee in a research center. And what that means is that first of all you are going to get a work visa and not a student visa. Second of all, you are going to be paid a salary from the European Union which is coming to your research institution and then they are going to pay you and you are not getting a regular stipend from the university. And so as the university is not paying you the stipend, they are not generally going to ask you for the regular TA ship duties which they ask and assign to the regular PhD candidates. And so it is going to alleviate a lot of additional burden from your work. In some cases students may actually like to do TA ship duties. It's of course a personal experience and personal choice but in this case you are not going to have any additional TA ship duties. Okay so next let's talk about the funding and funding is perhaps one of the biggest reasons why this why this fellowship stands out from other regular PhD fellowships. So the funding in a Marie Curie PhD fellowship is divided into two major parts. The first part is called the researcher unit cost and the second part is called the institutional unit cost. So let's first talk about the researcher unit cost. So this researcher unit cost is basically your salary and it is further divided into three parts. The first part is the living allowance which is 3270 euros as of now. The second part is the mobility allowance which is 600 euros as of now and the third part is known as the family allowance and you are going to be eligible for it if you are married and have a family and this um, this family allowance is 500 euros as of now and when I say as of now I mean 2021 so I am I am working on this project right now and these are the values which are applicable as of now and they may change for example in in in, in future. Now this is not the final value which you are going to be paid. I mean you are not going to be paid 4370 euros. There are going to come two things into the equation and the first thing is the country correction coefficient and the second thing is taxes because you are working on a work visa and not a student visa. So let's first talk about the country correction coefficient. It is a coefficient which is set by the European Union for all the countries and, and it depends on the economy of the country. So for example for Turkey it's lower than 100% it's around 84% for example. But for Sweden it is more than 100% it is around 120%. But the key thing to remember is that the country correction coefficient is not going to be applied to your final sum of 4370 euros but it's going to be applied to the to only the living allowance which is 3270 euros. So this percentage is going to be applied only to that value. Then your mobility and family allowance is going to be added to that and that's the value on which you are going to you are going to pay the taxes and the taxes may go as high as 40 to 45 percent in some countries of Europe. So after you have paid your taxes that's the value that you are going to get on a monthly basis. So it's really hard for me to tell you what is the final salary that you are going to be paid on a monthly basis because of course in all the countries of Europe uh, each country of Europe has a different country correction coefficient and each country has its own tax value tax percentage but you can do this calculation right now by looking at the country where you are applying and you can just find the country correction coefficient of that country and you can see how what is the percentage of the taxes inside of that country and you can just calculate that value for you.
So this was the salary, the researcher unit cost. I haven't yet talked about the the institutional unit cost, which is going to be paid, which is an additional amount, which is going to be paid to your research institution on a monthly basis. And it also consists of two parts. The first part is the research related and the second part is management related. The research related amount is 1800 euros per month and the management related amount is 1200 euros per month. So your research institution is being paid additional 3000 euros per month. And that's really a cool thing because you don't have to worry about the budget when you are conducting your research. I mean, there are no boundaries. If you are doing your research and you want some equipment, you have got the budget, uh, which is really a hard thing in uh, regular PhD fellowships because uh, you may want to buy some equipment, but there might not be a budget. But in this case, there is no boundary. There is no limit on the budget. So the last point that I want to discuss with you before I show you the online portal where you can find all the Marie Curie PhD positions which are available right now is the project duration. So the official duration of a Marie Curie PhD fellowship is mostly three years. And when I say three years, I mean that that's the duration for which the European Union is going to supply funding for your specific project. So what happens after these three years are finished? So the first thing is that, of course, the European Union funding stops. But what if your PhD isn't finished yet? So at this point, it really depends on what are your achievements and where are you standing in terms of your milestones of your PhD. So if everything is going well and your host institution is happy with you, you can just request them. You are just going to request them to extend the funding duration for you so that you are able to finish your PhD milestones. One thing to remember here is that those institutional unit costs, those 3000 euros, uh, which your host institution had been paid by European Union during these three years, if they have that money left, they can actually pay you from that budget. But it really depends on them and how, how much they can afford to pay you. So you should keep this in mind that if your PhD is not finished at the end of three years, then your host institution is going to be responsible to pay you and to, and to push your and to take your PhD further. Okay, so for this video, I am going to leave you guys by showing you the online portal where you can find the uh, Marie Curie PhD positions which are available right now. So I have this portal open right now in front of me. Uh, I am going to share the link in the description down below as well. And what you are going to see here is simple, simple two fields. You are going to uh, see the, the country that you want to select and the field that you want to select. So for example, I have just selected a selected a country here, Turkey, and there is a Mary Skodoska Curie ITN position available here right now. And it's in economics and political sciences. So let's just go to this link, full details. And this is how the portal generally looks. There are 15 PhD positions available in this specific project by the name of Adapted, which is actually the acronym for some project. Um, it is ITN again the innovative training network and the early stage researchers is actually the ESRs which are the researchers which the host institutions are going to hire. So you can just play around with this portal and you can select your desired country and your desired uh, desired field of research and you are going to find something and the follow up portal that opens you can find all the instructions and details. Okay, so I will leave you here for now. But again, Remember that the key message that I want you to take home from this video is that if you are planning to pursue your career in academia and you are planning to apply for a PhD, do apply for a Marie Curie PhD fellowship. It has a lot of research funding available. It is very family friendly and you are going to get a lot of opportunities for networking and just increasing your exposure and experience. And so that's it for this video. Uh, I will see you soon in another one. Take care guys.